shamed me, accused me of leaving her behind, that I didn't care for her. Then she broke it to me. He's better in bed. He's bigger. Yours is the smallest I've ever seen. Two weeks before the end of the year, she went on a girl's night out, and later during that night, her phone must have pocket dialed me, and I picked up, and I heard her... What's going on everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another subscriber email story. Guys, if you wanna send in your story, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's truestorynation at gmail.com. Whether you wanna give advice, you're looking to receive advice, um, teach some people how, to be, how you became successful, um funny stories those are great those are good we have we've had a few of those uh send in your stories to that email but uh you guys read the title to this one so let's get into it the subject is coming out on top hey true story recently stumbled upon red pill channels and i'm glad that i did my outlook on women in marriage have definitely changed for the better in my opinion just wanted to send my story, and if you'd like to show it on your channel, I'm perfectly okay with that. I'm just glad I didn't stay in my relationship long enough to get stuck in a worse situation than I did. Story may be a bit long. I apologize if it is. I apologize if I seem to ramble a bit. I'm on a 24-hour duty and running on no sleep. Uh-oh. 2016, my last year in high school. I started a relationship with my most recent ex. A mutual friend had introduced us and we started a very awkward friendship. She had recently just lost her boyfriend. He had offed himself and was still timid and suffering. We spent a lot of nights playing online games with our mutual friend and she eventually opened up more. We started spending more time away from our mutual friend and eventually started our relationship. It was rocky. She had some mental issues though and I had done my best to be patient and helpful. But it always seemed to be my fault, no matter the issue. She would always snap at me, curse me, verbally abuse me. Once she calmed down, she'd always come around and apologize for the things she had said and done. I should have left, but I cared for her, and so I stayed. I realized I made a really bad decision in doing that. Graduation neared, and I began my process to enlist in the U.S. Army. A decision she was not pleased with. The area I grew up in is poor, and in that country, options for jobs are few, and making a living is difficult. This was my chance to get out of there and make something of myself, and she gave me hell for it. Shamed me, accused me of leaving her behind, that I didn't care for her. But she knew this was my plan at the start of our relationship. At this point, I loved this girl. I wanted to make the most out of life for both of us, so I put up with her. And in June of 2017, I left for basic. From June to December, I was in training and tried my best to keep contact with her. Letters in basic, messages and calls in AIT. All the while, she began to grow distant and cold. And any time I would ask about it, she'd just say she was missing her previous boyfriend. I overlooked that. He was ripped from her after they'd been together for a while. The wound was going to hurt. So I again was patient and tried my best to be there for her. But no matter the effort I put in, she continued to grow distant. I started to get depressed. She'd snap at me more, blame me for her pain and loneliness, would ignore me for hours, and it was all my fault. I began to accept that the end was coming. At the end of December, I arrived at my first duty station, over 1,600 miles from home, halfway across the country, and I was alone and scared. My mother spent my childhood sheltering us. This was my first time away from family. Her abuse and berating only worsened. My unit was preparing for an upcoming deployment, so we spent weeks at a time in training exercises. Communication between us during these times was slow, and again, it was my fault. She would tell me what seemed like a daily basis. If you would have just stayed home, everything would be fine. I guess she'd have rathered me stayed and struggled. Whenever I was out of the field and not actively training, I'd have to wait hours on her to reply. She stopped doing video calls with me at night and she began talking to a guy from high school who was obsessed with her. He is a creepy mother effer. 
and always gave me weird vibes in high school. He was always trying to be around her, confessed his love for her, and was constantly trying to convince her to leave me for him, all the while having a girlfriend. I found all of this out later. She claimed it. She claimed to always tell him I don't feel the same. When I found out she was talking to him, I was angry and hurt. She could actively talk to him and call him, but I was barely given anything. She assured me it was nothing more than someone to talk to because I always was busy and didn't have time for her. She would do this often during arguments to try and hurt me or make me feel guilty for enlisting. And for the most part, it worked. I began to believe that she too was alone and maybe he understood better than I did. Young, stupid me. I allowed it. As long as she agreed to try and be more open with me and gave me the chance to understand and help her. Fast forward to July 2018. I'd submitted leave to go home and had been saving money to do so. I was super excited to see my parents and her. I'd bought my first car in January, a 1986 Fox Body Mustang LX and had been working on rebuilding and repairing it. I was ready to show it off to my family. I had started building my credit. I was proud of myself. I had started the process of making something of my life. The time came. I loaded the car up and headed home. I remember my mother's face when I pulled up the driveway. How her tears of joy reflected the headlights of my car. My girlfriend, however, showed little emotion. She bashed my car, hated that I had lost weight, and seemed even more resenting of me than through text. I was finally home, and she could barely hug or kiss me. While spending the night with her, she went to the bathroom and left her laptop open. I became curious and searched in her chats for the conversation with this new guy. What I found made me sick. Months worth of her telling him how messed up of a boyfriend I was, how horrible I was to her, and that she hated me for leaving her. And just as I expected, he was trying to make her leave me for him. When she came back, she noticed that I was upset. She began asking questions, and I ignored her. It didn't take long, however, for her to notice the open chat. She immediately began berating me and asking why the heck would you go through my messages? The audacity. I couldn't hold back. I yelled at her. I cursed her out. How could she do me that way? How could she do me that way? Badmouth me to a guy trying to F her when I had been miles away trying to create something for us. And she's back home painting me as a bad guy. Once I'd finished my outburst, she apologized and tried to hold me, but I didn't want her to touch me. I grabbed my things and I left. I spent the rest of the night with my dad at home, swapping parts on my car. Back at my duty station, we continued to grow apart. I rarely replied on time, and any time I did talk to her, I got angry and nauseous. I didn't want, her, I didn't want to deal with her or this new guy. I had, I had training and deployment to prepare for and I wasn't ready to forgive her yet. Eventually, we began talking more though. In September 2018, I was again allowed to take leave. Leading up to that month, we had been told for sure that we would be deploying and was given an approximate timeline for when it would happen. Once back home, I let my parents and her know when I would be gone. My parents were worried, but supportive. She ended, up, she ended our relationship, said she couldn't deal with me deploying. She began to spend hours, then days, not talking to me. I was going to be I was going to a different country, and she had to let me go, heartbroken and feeling alone. End of October, I touched down in country. The flight was 32 hours long. Whoa. And every time we stopped, I tried to make contact with her. No messages. Not even a reassuring text. She'd been inactive for over three days before I finally got a reply. Sorry, spent a few days with this new guy. That's it. That's all I got. Depression really started to overcome me. I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to be around anyone. I hardly contributed during work hours. I spent the entirety of my first few months in my room. I shouldn't have let her affect me that way, but I did, and it was eating me alive. Come December, I began to lose weight, and not in a good way. She continued growing more distant and spending more time with this new guy. She continued to claim nothing was going on, and that we weren't together so even if something was, it wasn't my business. I was suffering, and she knew it. Then she broke it to me. On Christmas morning, she told me she was sleeping with this guy, and she had a few times. To add insult to injury, she compared us. He doesn't want me to change. He accepts me for who I am. 
He's better in bed. He's bigger. Yours is the smallest I've ever seen. I was crushed. At the time, I didn't realize it, but she was intending to cut deep. By this point, my squad leader had taken notice that I was severely depressed and wasn't dealing with my excuses anymore. He stopped by for a wellness check and practically dragged me to the gym with him. I felt out of place. My insecurities caused by what she had said was eating at me. And here I was, surrounded by men, slinging weights, and women staring at me. I didn't want to be there, but I knew he was right. I needed to stop drowning in sorrow and start working on myself again. And so I did, and my confidence grew. I became proud of myself. I spent every week challenging myself, and I eventually stopped allowing it to bother me. I began to move on, and she noticed. She began telling me, you can find someone else if you want, and would get upset if I joked about doing so. She started talking to me more, and even wanted to try calling again. I wasn't having it though. I had more important things to do. Halfway through deployment, she told me he'd had an outburst at her. Told her she was a ish person. She said she was sorry that she did the things that she did, and that she was done with him. Cool, I'm going to shower. She then told me a few months later that she hooked up with him again and thought she might be pregnant. I told her to take a test and let him know the outcome and that it did not concern me. Now present day, I'm about to leave active duty and head back home to join the state police. I still own my Mustang and I have dropped over $14,000 into it. I also, own a, I also own a truck I bought after deployment and have dropped nearly $2,000 into that. I've got pretty good credit and still continue to hit the gym. As for her, she still lives at home and is alone. So I'd say it's safe to assume I made a good decision and I grew far more than if we would have stayed together. Thanks for taking the time to read this. I know it's kind of long and again, I apologize. Love the channel. Keep up the good work. Man, wow. Salute to you, man. Thanks for supporting the channel. Um, let me give my thoughts. Wow, so like you said in the beginning, I am glad you eventually left that situation. Just think, so you were leaving this town that you would say is a poor city or a poor town. Um, nobody really makes it. The money there is not good. You're going to struggle. You know, nobody really makes it. You're going to struggle staying there. And a lot of times, you, uh, most, most times, to become successful anyway, you have to leave where you're from. Staying in the same spot is, is not is sometimes is a lot of times it's not going to work out for you. But you saw that leaving was very beneficial. She tried to hold you back. Think about that. She tried to keep you from bettering yourself. What does that tell you from the get go? It was about her. She wanted you to stay there. She didn't care about you bettering yourself. If she really cared about you two being together and you being a better man, she would have said, all right, look, I'm packing my bag suit and we're going to go together or something along those lines. Or, hey, I'll be here to support you, which anyway is a bad idea anyway, because it's a long, dis long distance relationships just don't work. But, um, but from the beginning, she wasn't for you. It was all about her. It was all about her. And uh, you tried to date while you were in the army. And man, I've read countless stories. Uh, stories that I haven't even posted, I've read before on Reddit, and man, it never works out. It, ne it never works out, and I'm sure it has a lot to do with the whole um, long-distance relationship thing, but it just never works out. You guys are in the comments saying, yeah, I've seen it time and time again. I've told brothers don't get into relationships. Our sergeants will tell them not to do it. They do it anyway, and they get hurt. You know, same song, you know, I'm I'm so I'm very glad that you're doing good. You're about to become an officer, which is great. Um, Mustang and I love Mustangs. That's cool. You drop 14 grand into that car. That's awesome. I like how um, I mean, at, at first I didn't understand, like, man, why are they still communicating back and forth? But I do like how when she told you, hey, I'm pregnant by him, blah, blah, blah. You're like okay take the test let him know the outcome and it it doesn't concern me because it doesn't 
she's she's she should be dead to you like i wouldn't even be talking to her but hey it is what it is it looks like you really did move on which is great and that's the best revenge i'm pretty sure she's still texting you and reaching out and she's going to continue to do so my advice would be ignore her just ignore her let her talk to herself in the dms and the text messages or whatever, however she tries to contact you let her leave voicemails that's up to her she can do what she want to do she's not your concern anymore you're about to be a state police off you're about to be a state police officer you have this car that you love you're moving you're you know you're moving back home or you're moving to some city or whatever live your life man and be great that's what matters so guys uh, let me know what you think about this first email in the comments we're gonna go ahead and move on to another email all right guys so we got another email here this is email number two the subject is my story about my cheating ex hey true story i would like to be called kz if you ever read this for one of your videos and if you don't that is fine i apologize as this is going to be a long story and my english is not my first language so please forgive the spelling mistakes so here it goes i met my ex back in the summer of 2016. i just finished my dental degree and it was doing my internship program we met at a club and we just clicked and i got her number and we started dating like two weeks after that the first few months felt like heaven she was super nice outgo outgoing respectful the whole nine yards and as time passed i thought this girl could be the one note i forgot to mention i'm an arab and she was from the thailand so if i was to marry her i had to fight my whole family for it considering it's not from our tradition to marry someone from a different culture altogether. A year into our relationship, she lost her job, and I was basically supporting her and my family as my father had passed away before I finished school. So it was tough to be honest, but I pushed through it for my family and especially for her. I considered her to be the one. I fought my mom so I could be with her, and boy was that a huge mistake. Soon after that, she got pregnant. As later I found out, she went off the pill and I stupidly let it slide. I know it was the, I know it was the stupidest thing I could ever have done. My whole life, and as you may know, that is a big no-no if people are not married in the Arab world. So we decided to go with the termination. All was well for a while. I supported her through all of it, financially and emotionally. I was carrying my family and her on my back. Fast forward to the end of 2018. I have noticed that she became different, not her usual self. She would act and start fights for nothing. And she became distant. And I tried talking to her, but was always met with fake reassurances and the BS. I love you talk, but I had the gut feeling something was wrong. Two weeks before the end of the year, she went on a girl's night out and later during that night, her phone must have pocket dialed me and I picked up and I heard her laughing and talking to some guy and I kept listening and I could hear him flirting with her and she went along with it. I closed the phone and told myself I will talk to her tomorrow. So when the morning came, I called her and I told her we need to meet up. So I went to her home and I confronted her about it and she kept gaslighting me and lying and said it was nothing just a friend messing around but i kept pressing her she kept saying she is sorry it was a mistake and she would do anything to fix it but that was it for me i broke up with her broke cheating a immediately and blocked her on every social media possible for the next couple of months i went on a binge drinking trip to numb the pain i was destroyed and i felt like i was not even a man i couldn't even keep my woman Thank God all that changed when I found out about the red pill. I picked myself up and changed my life. I focused on my work as a dentist and I'm currently working on getting into my master's program. For the time being, I stopped that as I am helping out on the front line of the pandemic, but all is well, I'll pick up after the pandemic is done. Two months ago, after I started posting pics again on social media, her friend started hitting me up and wanting to hang out, LMAO. I kept the conversation to a minimum, but I'm considering getting some, if you know what I mean, as a way of revenge. I'm so sorry about the long story. If it wasn't for Red Pill, I would have probably lost my life drowning in my sorrows. But as it always says, work on yourself and become a better man 
every day. That's the best revenge. Thanks for listening, True Story. I wish you all the best. Wow. Let me give my thoughts. Salute to you, man. I'm glad you didn't continue drinking and ruin your life because that that could ruin your life, man. You know, I'm glad you picked yourself up and the red pill helped you with that. You know, you just started watching red pill content, listening to red pill content or even reading red pill content content and it helped you. And I will tell you, it helped me too. It helped me too, man. I was on Reddit. I was on YouTube. I was just Googling. It started with me Googling questions. Has anyone ever did this? Or has anyone ever been through this? What did you do? Because I didn't have anybody to talk to. I was embarrassed. I was, it was embarrassing. So I just Google searched it. And it led me to Reddit. Um, and I started seeing videos on YouTube. It was like, oh, I remember this guy talking. You know, I remember this guy saying this stuff. Let me actually listen. Because at the time, I think I wasn't really taking it in i would just listen to it and it was just like eh. you know and at the time i was originally listening to it years and years ago i wanted to be married so it's like it was almost like going in one ear one ear and out the other but then i started hearing these guys talk about gaslighting and female nature and i'm like man I, i've been through that yeah a lot of, a lot of these chicks have done that to me and the last situation was it was just like that what the heck and things started making sense to me and it helped me, man. It helped me out a lot, tremendously. So um, I'm glad it helped you. I'm glad you're on your purpose. You're doing your thing. You're on the front line, helping people, saving people. Salute to you. It sucks. I hope you uh, made up with your family. I hope all is well. Um, you say you got in a big fight with your mother, your family, and, and they basically, it's, I don't know if they disowned you or what, man, but hopefully things work out, man. That's family. You did all that for someone who just didn't even care about you as much as you cared about her. And I know that hurt. That's probably why you, I'm sure that's why you started drinking. But I'm glad you got out of that drinking and you just got back on your purpose. So salute to you. Thanks for sending in this story. Guys, comment below on story on email number one and email number two. What do you think? What are your thoughts? If you guys want to send in a story, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's truestorynation at gmail.com. And I'll catch you guys at the next one.